Welcome to Malifaux University. 210 Triggers. Mini games are in one way or another variants of shoots and ladders. Move forward, move backward, see where luck takes you. There's no strategy involved and little a player can do to actually affect the outcome of the game. We play Malifaux in part because we appreciate and even enjoy shenanigans wringing victory out of fate's cold, dead hands, and snatching success from our opponents just as they think they have won. But in a good way. Triggers are a major aspect of Malifaux gameplay, and you need to know how they work. Triggers are additional outcomes of duels. They can come from actions a model takes, or from resistance to those actions. In either case, the trigger is tied to a suit in the conflict. Let's look at a duel between the guild and the arcanists for examples of triggers you might see in a game. Taggart Quig is leading a crackdown on arcanist activity in the city. He's engaged with Angelica Durand, and it's his activation. He lashes out with his barbed whip and flips a ten of crows to go with his stat of six for a total of sixteen of crows. The crow could trigger Siphon Essence, but he has no chance of killing her with this attack, so is irrelevant. Angelica flips a 13 of masks to go with her defense of 5 for a total of 18 of masks. Taggart has nothing in his hand to beat that, so he loses the duel. Because she flipped a mask and successfully defended against an enemy attack, Angelica triggers Get Off the Stage and places Taggart into base contact with a scheme marker up to 12 inches away from her. Taggart still has an action to take, though, so he fires his Peacebringer at Angelica, flipping an 11 of tomes for a total of 16. When Angelica defends against this projectile attack, she flips a 5 of masks for a total of 10 of masks and loses the duel. Taggart declares the Drop It trigger and flips a single card for damage. He flips a 6, which does moderate damage for 3 points. Angelica now drops a Scheme Marker in line of sight of Taggart as described in his trigger. For his bonus action, Taggart uses Sabotage Their Plans, targeting the scheme marker Angelica just dropped. It comes with a 5, and he needs an 11 of masks. This mask isn't a trigger. This mask is part of his target number. Luck is with him, and he flips an 8 of masks for a total of 13 of masks. He drops his own scheme marker next to Angelica's, and then removes her scheme marker. Had he flipped an 8 of any other suit, the action would have failed. There are specific rules about when triggers take place, but unless the card says otherwise, the assumption for every trigger is that it happens only after that model succeeds in the duel. Taggart did not get his Siphon Essence trigger because he lost that duel. Angelica got to use her defensive Get Off the Stage trigger because she won that duel. She didn't get to use that trigger in his Peacebringer attack because she lost that duel. We'll discuss trigger timing more later on. Unless your action or ability says you must declare a trigger, gremlins, declaring a trigger is always optional, especially if you know your opponent will have a special reaction to your trigger. If you're in a duel where both the attacker and defender have the opportunity to declare triggers, the attacker declares a trigger first. Let's look at Dashiell Barker for an example of this. Dashiell Barker attacks Gwyneth Maddox with his axe. He flips a 12 of rams for a total of 18 of rams. He's excited to see the ram, which will give him the critical strike trigger, adding 1 to whatever damage he does to Maddox. She flips an 8 of crows for a total of 13 of crows. She's losing the duel, but now Dashiell has a choice to make. The difference in their duel totals means he's going to have a negative modifier on this damage flip already. If he declares the critical strike trigger now, Gwyneth will use the Unimpressed trigger, which will reduce the damage she suffers by 2. He chooses not to declare the trigger, since that will only make things worse for him, flips 2 cards for damage, and takes the lesser of the 2. The 5 does weak damage, and Gwyneth takes 2 points of damage. So why did Gwyneth Maddox get to use her resistance trigger when she was losing the duel when Angelica Duran did not? The wording of Gwyneth's trigger says, when resolving. You don't have to win a duel for it to be resolved, so she gets to use the trigger even when she loses this duel. There are ways of adding more options for triggers. 
Some actions or stats have embedded or built-in suits that guarantee a certain trigger. Models who can use soul stones can also spend a soul stone before the duel to place any single suit on the duel. Regardless of how many options you wind up having though, you can declare only one trigger in a duel. Let's say Dashiell has been given the task of exterminating the infectious Hamelin from the quarantine zone. It's Hamelin's activation and he swings his black staff at Dashiell. The black staff comes with a six of crows, guaranteeing the terminal trigger if he's successful in his attack. Hamelin, being a master model, can use soul stones and has plans involving a lot of rats. He spends the soul stone before the attack to put a tome on the flip. Hamelin flips a 12 of masks for a total of 18. Dashiell flips an 8 of rams for a total of 14 and decides not to cheat. He is wearing armor, after all. Now Hamelin has to choose a trigger. The embedded crow would let him declare terminal, giving Dashiell the injured plus one condition, or he could stick with his original plan of declaring the infestation trigger from the tome he paid for, summoning a Malifaux rat into base contact with Dashiell Barker. But since he flipped a mask, he also has the option of declaring Skittering Vermin and moving a model in line of sight that has the Vermin keyword. Decisions, decisions. He sticks to his original idea and declares the Infestation trigger. The difference in their dual totals means he has a negative modifier on the damage flip, so he flips two and takes the lower value, which is the eight, doing three points of damage. Dashiell's armor ability reduces that by one and he takes only two points of damage. The trigger now takes effect, and a Malifaux Rat is placed in base contact with Dashiell Barker. Normally, summoning a model would give the enemy crew a pass token, but this rat has the mindless ability that negates that. Once you declare a trigger, you may not change it after damage and other game effects take place. If you can't carry out a trigger because of gameplay, then the trigger just doesn't happen. Let's say it's a couple of turns later with Hamlin and Dashiell slugging it out. Hamlin has disengaged and a mounted guard has charged Hamlin and finished her attack. Hamlin attacks the mounted guard with his black staff, which still has the embedded crow. He flips a nine of masks for a total of 15. The mounted guard flips a two of rams for a total of seven. Hamlin is thinking about that rat pestering Dashiell and chooses the skittering vermin trigger from the mask he flipped, foregoing the crow. He flips for damage and gets a three, doing two points of damage to the mounted guard. When he tries to draw line of sight to that rat, Hamelin discovers the mounted guard and Dashiell Barker completely block his view, and he cannot see it. It's too late to change his trigger to the one from the crow, and his trigger is just wasted. Like other actions, some triggers have special restrictions and costs listed in italics. These must be met or paid when the trigger is declared, not later when it is carried out. If you don't meet the restrictions, or you cannot pay the cost when you declare it, you cannot use that trigger. Let's look at Joss, the Arcanist Henchman. He collects special power tokens to activate certain game effects and wants to chop up the mounted guard's horse into dog food with his arc axe. That action says he may discard a power token to make the damage from this attack irreducible, but right now he doesn't have any. He says it's no big deal and swings anyway. He gets an 11 of crows for a total of 17. The mounted guard flips a 4 for a total of 9. Joss declares the electroshock trigger from the crow, but realizes that he still has no power tokens. His trigger fails, and he flips a single card for damage. He flips a 3 and does weak damage for a total of 2 points. The cost of some triggers is your own model's health. If paying the cost of a trigger would kill the model by reducing its health to 0, you're not allowed to do it. There are plenty of other ways to kill yourself, but this isn't one of them. Zoraida's voodoo doll is an example of a model with this trigger. He has a one-armed scissor with a mask built into the stat that guarantees the frantic attack trigger. The cost of that trigger is that the voodoo doll suffers one damage. If he's already down to one health, he's not allowed to declare this trigger, even though it's guaranteed. We've covered some of them already, but there are five timing categories for when a trigger may take place. The first is after succeeding. This trigger happens after the action is complete, but only if it succeeded. If either the model taking this action or the target of the trigger are no longer in play, having been killed or buried, for example, 
then the trigger fails. After succeeding is the default timing for all triggers, so isn't printed on any model's card. Immediately triggers usually affect the duel in some way, so they happen before the duel is resolved, during the declare triggers step of the action. Joss has an example of this type of trigger on his arc axe. If he has a tome in his duel against an enemy model, either through the card he flips or by using a soul stone beforehand, he may declare the hyper reactor trigger, which immediately gives him a power token before the duel is even resolved. When resolving usually affects the damage flip, so happens after the action was successful, but before it's completely finished. Gwyneth Maddox's unimpressed resistance trigger is an example of a when resolving trigger. After killing triggers happen only after the successful action kills the target model. Taggart Quig's barbed whip has one of these. It has to succeed with a crow against an enemy model, but if he kills that model with the attack, he gains a soul stone. After resolving triggers happen after the action is complete, even if it failed. Like other triggers, if the model taking this action or the target of the trigger are no longer in play when it's time for the trigger to take effect, the trigger just fails. The infamous Captain Zip has one of these as a resistance trigger. When he's attacked by an enemy model, if he flips a mask in the duel, regardless of whether he wins the duel or not, he may declare blasting off again and place himself anywhere within six inches of where he was. Let's review the rules on triggers we've covered so far. Triggers usually happen only if you win the duel unless the wording says otherwise. Declaring a trigger is usually optional. If both the attacker and defender have a trigger, the attacker declares the trigger first. Models that can use soul stones may spend one before the duel to add a suit to the flip to get a specific trigger. Some stats also have embedded suits that all but guarantee a trigger. One of the last rules on triggers is that they are affected by any modifiers that are related to the action that spawned the trigger. Let's say that Jack Daw's crew is in an encounter with a Dreamer crew and Lady Legea is attacking the Dreamer with her talons. For starters, the Dreamer has a serene countenance, so all attack actions against him have a negative modifier. He also has the Eldritch Magic upgrade, which won't help him right now but gives Lady Legea an edge. She flips two cards and gets the Red Joker, which she is allowed to use despite the negative modifier. She puts a ram on it and has a total of 18. The Dreamer flips a 1 for a total of 6. That difference in their duels gives Lady Legea a positive modifier to her damage flip. She declares the Take It All trigger and flips two cards for damage. She takes the 9 for moderate damage and does two points of damage. The Dreamer is incorporeal, so reduces that by one and takes just one damage. She then uses the trigger, and if the Dreamer doesn't discard his upgrade, she gets another damage flip. He really wants to keep that upgrade, so he lets it go. Since her first damage flip had a positive modifier, this trigger gets the same modifier. She flips two cards and takes the 12 doing 4 damage and giving the Dreamer the injured plus 2 condition. He takes 3 damage and wonders if it was worth it. When a model makes the fake attack against a model trying to disengage, neither the attacker nor the defending model get to declare triggers because it's a fake attack. In their earlier fight, if Gwyneth Maddox tries to disengage from Dashiell Barker's unpleasant company, she wouldn't get to use her unimpressed trigger even if she flipped a crow against Dashiell's attack, because it's not a real attack. Finally, if a trigger generates another action, in the original model or in another, that new action cannot declare triggers, but doesn't count against any model's action limit, even if it's a bonus action. Let's look at Asura Rotten for a final example of how to blend many of these principles together. Asura has the Zombie Apocalypse tactical action. It comes with a stat of 6, but requires a 10 of crows to happen. She can hope to flip it randomly from her fate deck, spend a soul stone to put a crow on her flip since she's a henchman, or cheat a crow with a value of four or higher from her control hand. If she hits the target number and suit, she gets to summon a mindless zombie into base contact with herself. If you look at this action, 
it has triggers available for both tomes and masks. So how would she get those? Let's say she spins the soul stone to put a mask on her flip, and if she doesn't get the card she needs, she cheats one in from her hand. The crow from her hand meets the target number requirement, so she places a mindless zombie in base contact with herself. The mask triggers swift action, which says she can take this action again. Since this new action is generated from a trigger, she's not allowed to declare triggers again, so there's no point in spending a soul stone to put a tome or mask on this new flip. Assuming she has another crow in her hand to guarantee success, she'll flip another card and cheat in the crow to make it happen, summoning another mindless zombie into base contact. When it's all said and done, she's spent two soul stones and cheated in four cards from her hand to summon four mindless zombies, and she still has her bonus action. That's the overview of triggers. Pick up a printable set of all the markers and tokens you need to play Malifaux in the War Game Vault. If you haven't already, join our Patreon for early, ad-free access to all new content, and be sure to visit the Malifaux University gift shop for the latest in Malifaux-themed shirts, hoodies, drinkware, and more. Links are in the notes below. And remember, play friendly games, keep it simple, and have fun.